Somebody's at my door. You can't come in the house. My special boy. Oh. What's more? Woohoo! Oh, he's been becoming a beast. <laughs> One of the ultimate predators here in Florida throughout America. There we go. What's up, Kevin? What's going on, Kevin? Long time no see. Woo! He's so big! Somebody's at my door. La da dee, la da 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 da. Cameo, Timmy! What are you guys doing? Come get some carrots. Come hear that. You want a carrot? What's up, my boy? You can't come in the house, dude. I've told you this so many times. <laughs> yeah. Uh oh. Here comes Timmy. Take the carrot. Take the carrot if you want it. Timmy, you want a carrot? Okay. You get the bigger one because you're huge. You can't come in the house. You can't come in the house. Eat the carrot. No. There you go. Don't bite my fingers off. Mm. Okay, okay. Take your carrot. Good boy. Good boy. Eat the carrot. Use use the back of that palate. Use the back of that plate. Crush it up. Very good. I'm proud of you. I love you, Timmy. You're my special boy. Oh, <laughs> that was a neat little trick you did there. All right, all right, guys. Back up. Back up. We're not doing this. We're get get out of the screen porch. No, they know better. Just take the carrot. Oh, yeah, sorry, just break that off a little bit. Do you want this or not? You just want to lick me. That's that's all you're trying to do. You're trying to get in here. You're trying to cuddle on the carpet. We're not doing that. You're too big. There you go. My horse. My beautiful steed. Cameo Humphrey Gamanesh. Timmy, I see you getting a little Riley. You better settle down. You better see that carrot. All right. All right. Back up, guys. Back up. Back up. Ugh. Back up. Please. Back up. <laughs> I'm trying to eat breakfast, guys. Move. Come on. Move your face. Move your face. Move your face. Thank you. Thank you. I have breakfast to eat. Thank you. Behave. And you know what to do if trespassers come. Stop them. Man, I can't watch my Dave Coffin and have breakfast without these camels. Boy, I need to come out for everything. Hey. What? Oh, my God. <laughs> you guys are so cute. But seriously, I really need it. So I, I just relax. I got your carrots right here. Oh, oh, no, not my fingers. Be good, Kameo. Be good. Oh, don't stab me with the carrot. There you go, my sweet boy. Mm. <laughs> you guys are so funny. Kameo, just take the carrot. Oh, okay. <laughs> there you go. No. What's going on, beautiful people? Welcome back to my wildlife. I'm here with a little Cooper's hawk. And something you may not know is that my girlfriend is a wildlife rehabber. And this is a beautiful Cooper's hawk that was brought to Flamingo Gardens where she works. Florida's a wild place and there's lots of wildlife that gets clipped by cars. And it's good to have wildlife rehabbers to relocate these animals after they get healed up. But look at that beautiful Cooper's hawk. This animal is one of the most badass birds of prey on the planet. The occipiters are able to cut through trees and whatnot, turn on a dime because they use their tail like a cheetah uses its tail to move or fast. And even though they're not the biggest bird of prey, they are an ultimate predator. They're like, as some people say, they're like a primeval bird from hell, but they're beautiful. Look at those eyes. One of the ultimate predators here in Florida and throughout America. And now this bird's ready to be released thanks to Shannon over at Flamingo Gardens and the rest of the Flamingo Gardens crew. And now he can live his life here at Chandler's Wild World or wherever he wants to go. That's so cool. How you doing, Cheech? How you doing, Sean? Want some food? Come on, Sean. Come on. Beautiful American alligator. <laughs> Ooh, oh, they're so crazy. I need to start handling these guys more for the tours. Beautiful American alligators donated by the FWC. Oh, that's a hungry little alligator right there. Look at look at this specimen right here. You hungry? You want some more? Whoa! Finish your food, dude. You're crazy. Uh-oh. What are you doing? What are you doing? You <laughs> <laughs> just bit the mold. What's going on, Cheech? There you go. See you later. Oh my. Oh. I'm sorry, Anakin. That's crazy. He's so much bigger. 
He's a little bit dark right now because of the environment, but look at how much bigger Anakin the saltwater crocodile got since I've been gone. The boys have been feeding him really good. He's been becoming a beast. <laughs> Anakin, Crocodilus porosus, the biggest reptile on the planet. I mean, dude, look, his teeth. I mean, I gotta be real careful because remember this nub, it's still healing from the cobra bite and all the surgeries. His head's massive. He grew, oh my goodness, he had to have grown two times as big since last time. Look at his teeth. His teeth are thick, solid, white, turning into big boy crocodile teeth. So if you get bit by him now, it's not gonna be fun. Look at that beautiful tail, gorgeous animal. I cannot wait. Oh, he's got a loose tooth right there. See that little loose tooth? Guys, should I use my good hand to pull it out? No, I'm not gonna do that, it's a bad idea. <laughs> Look at him, I'm so stoked. This is my favorite animal on the planet. I've said it plenty of times before. Crocodile's porosis, the saltwater crocodile, biggest reptile on the planet. Literally the record's over 21 feet long. Known man-eater in Northern Australia, Southeast Asia, and even found throughout Asia all the way to the point where they used to be found around India. Sometimes they still are found around India. I'm so excited. Beautiful male saltwater crocodile. You know, they're not really endangered in most of the range, uh, but in the future, I do want to get him a girlfriend so he's happy because these animals do have girlfriends in the wild. They have a stretch of river that they protect and they protect those girls too. They're very loving animals. They have vocalizations to their girls. They blow bubbles to their girls and they protect their girls. This is not food. Big boy, Aries. He's looking good too. But yeah, that's Anakin. I want to pull him out and show you guys. I got to throw him some food, throw some food to the other crocodilians. And I got some cleaning to do in the snake house. Can you guess what kind of snake we're going to clean today? Bushmaster. I can't scream right now. It's the heart medication. Gotta, gotta stay calm. Don't need to go back to the hospital. Oh my goodness. What a beast. What a beast. Let me get a few photos with this guy. <laughs> Well, 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 big surprise. While I was in the hospital for a while, nobody wanted to water my King Cobra enclosure. Who would have known that? Nobody wanted to get chased around by a 14 foot long King Cobra. Well, now I'm back and I'm better than ever and I got the right tools because of Midwest tongs. I got a little something here to make everything a little, a little bit safer. Just a little, just a little, little tool right here. A giant hook custom for rattlesnakes, bushmasters, and big lapids like King Cobras. So we're gonna be using this on Kevin. We used it on Justina not long ago. I just gotta be careful with my nub. Now that I'm in the nub club, it's still healing and it hurts when I tap it on stuff. It feels great. You know what I'm talking about, Tyler. You know what I'm talking about, Justin. It feels great. You tap it on something, and it's an incredible pain. You feel the bone uh, vibrate. It's awesome. Uh, but as you can see, all the plants in here are dried up. They're not completely dead. Some of them look a little bit, I mean, that one might be dead for sure. I mean, kind of. Comment below, do you think that plant's dead? Let, let, let's, get the, let's get the comment section going up. Uh, I gotta take out all these bamboo plants. They're not completely dead. I'll put them out in the sun, natural lighting, get them lots of water, and hopefully they'll all come back to life. There's still a lot of plants in there that are still alive. So what I'm gonna do is get Kevin out, put him in the snake holding receptacle right here. He does have a smaller water bowl in there, but the big water dish does not have water in it because nobody wanted to go inside the giant King Cobra enclosure. Ryan did for a moment, and then Ryan got chased out of the King Cobra enclosure. Good thing he works with venomous reptiles and he's licensed and stones backing him up. Uh, but Kevin is a king cobra at the end of the day. And th that's a big thing with Kevin. A lot of people think that Kevin won't bite and he's my buddy. I understand Kevin. Kevin knows me, he's very intelligent. He's like a monitor lizard, but he's still a king cobra. And if you push his buttons enough, he will bite you. I'm sure you guys have seen in past videos, he has open mouth struck at me multiple times, just like Justina. But Justina has a much crankier personality and she growls a lot, her tongue's always out. Uh, Kevin is still a defensive animal, but he's not as bad as Justina when it comes to being cranky. Uh, but he's still a dangerous animal, so we gotta respect him. So I gotta clean up that enclosure. We're gonna take out those plants. I'm gonna prop these doors open so we can get Kevin out. And I'm gonna be pulling him out with this beautiful Midwest Tongs custom hook. Big badass hook. Thank you so much, Dana. Thank you so much to my boys over at Midwest Tongs. Go get your safety equipment. They got everything you need for reptiles. So let's get this door propped open. We're gonna use this vision cage with a monocled cobra in it. So just make sure that's super safe. Oh, I found the hose. I was looking for this hose. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, we're like freaking out like, where's the hose? Where's the hose? This is the old hose. We have a new one we're going to use. Kevin is in the corner of the enclosure. He ate a small python not long ago. Oh, there he goes. 
Sorry, Kevin. All right, he's already looking at me. Let me get my hook ready. Do you see him? He's right there. Big boy. All right, you're gonna come out. Come on. There we go. What's up going on, Kevin? Long time no see. So you're gonna do a full on chase. I just fed you and this is how you treat me. This is the first time I'm dealing with Kevin in probably over two months since the bite, since everything. You can see he's still massive. He was a little skinny when I came through because nobody was able to get him some food. But that's okay. Now I'm back to working with him. Ooh! There we go. Look, he's massive. Beautiful big king cobra. Just gotta get a good handle on him. Oh man, Kevin, you're huge. It's very difficult not to do what I've been doing forever when it comes to handling Kevin. Come on. You can see he's honestly just trying to get away. Uh, wow. This is very difficult. Let me just get right him a little bit. There we go. Put him over here. Woo! I told you guys I'm not trying to free him anymore. Be a better example to you guys, but it's not easy to handle the world's biggest venomous snake and one of the biggest king cobras in the US with nothing but a hook and tailing. There's no way you're gonna double hook an animal this big. Oh boy. Relax, he's just trying to get away. All right. Gonna have to, gonna have to gun him a little bit. Woo. This. Maybe a little bit of free handling won't hurt. <laughs> Maybe a little bit of free handling won't hurt. <laughs> Woo! He's so big! <laughs> this sucks! Ah. No, Kevin, we're being safe now. We don't use. Ah, son of a bitch. Don't hurt your finger. Ah, just easier to free handle. Who's father? See, he's fine too. He's got the itis because he ate not long ago. I'm sorry, buddy. He doesn't like the touch of a hook. But that's why we're gonna be nice and calm with him. We want to make sure his stomach doesn't get upset. Oh, he's so big! I'm sorry. Kevin, I love you, buddy. I'm, I know this is not how we usually do things. All right, I'm putting the hook down because I do have to guide him into this can. Oh my goodness. See, I did it mostly with the hook. At the end of the day, if you don't know how to handle a king cobra, hook, no hook. You shouldn't be near king cobra. No, king cobra is top tier level, just like a mamba, just like any of these other snakes, even though mamba and king cobra are totally different ways to handle. Um, but that was me attempting to handle Kevin with this giant hook. And I'll get better as my finger heals, but he's a massive snake. It is hard to handle a snake that big. He's literally like 30 something pounds. When I last weighed him officially, like four years ago, he was around 22 pounds. Now he's definitely close to around 30. So he's a big boy. He's got a big belly full of food. So anyways, we're gonna get to cleaning. My back. Woo, all right. We just finished cleaning up the enclosure. We took out all the dead plants or half dead plants, put them outside, they're good to go. Um, I had a lot of thinking when I was cleaning up this enclosure and getting everything going. I've just told you guys a million times about why I handle the animals I handle, why I do it the way I do it, what the animals are thinking, how I'm able to predict the next move. And you know, I'm not gonna free handle any of this stuff in this collection anymore. I'm not free handling the rattlers, I'm not free handling the mambas, but Kevin and Justina, if I make a mistake with these hooks, and I know some of you guys are experts watching this and you think you know every way to do everything and nobody should do certain things, I don't care. I'm not arguing with anyone anymore. I just dropped my King Cobra that I've been handling for years upon years upon years now. And I've had a great relationship with this King Cobra, even though he's tried to bite me in certain situations when I push my envelope. But at the end of the day, free handling keeps him calm because he's a big bodied snake and his personality is more laid back than other King Cobras. He is a massive animal. I will try to get him out with the hook, but I'm not gonna risk dropping him anymore. If I have to free handle this King Cobra, I'm gonna free handle this King Cobra. 
And I'm sorry if that's gonna upset some people because I promised that I wouldn't free him anymore, but look at this guy. He's not shooting out like Justina, even though he can. He's just chilling. I'm gonna gently use this hook to bring him out. And I'm gonna free handle him into the enclosure. Cause you know what? I know this animal well. This is not a random wild snake like how it was in India. And you can see he's investigating, he's looking around. But look at this, look how much more comfortable and relaxed he is when I'm supporting his body and I'm not letting him slip off a freaking hook. So I'm sorry if I sound pissed off, but I am because certain people in my life have tried to give me options or uh, ultimatives of what I can do with my animals that I've been handling forever. And I'm not gonna let people tell me how to do things. So yeah, I'm gonna use hooks for the rest of my animals, but if I have to handle Kevin a certain way to keep him comfortable, keep him relaxed, I'm gonna do it. And see that little neck twitch he was just doing on his uh, lower hood on the front? That's a sign of a king cobra being pissed off. And he's pissed off, not because I'm pissed off right now, but because I was just slipping and sliding with him on a tool that he's not used to. And I'm not gonna keep pissing him off. I'm done. I try to make everyone in the world happy, and I realize that at the end of the day, you can't make everyone happy. And Kevin, he's way more relaxed than when I was just trying to get him to that can. So I'm sorry if I'm coming off as aggressive. Uh, I don't like it when people try to tell me how to do things with my animals. I know what's best for these animals. Look, he's looking around, he's like, what's going on? Huh? So I'm gonna give him his space. It's nighttime for him. I'm gonna put my Buddha statue back because I'm a firm believer in Buddhism. It means peace. There you go. Buddha protect Kevin. There Many years go. of life ahead. I'm gonna lock up this enclosure. And now we're gonna clean the Bushmaster. And I'm sorry, guys, that I came off as very aggressive. It's just one thing matters to me in my life, and that's my animals. And that's how my animals feel. That's how my animals are treated. And it's how my animals get to live in captivity the best life possible. And if that scares some of you guys, the way I handle my animals, and I know most of you guys are gonna comment, do what you need to do, Chandler, I get that. You guys have been watching my videos for a long time. You understand I'm not just some schmuck. I might joke around, I might laugh a lot, I might make a lot of might be goofy but that's just my personality I want you guys to have fun while learning about these animals but I do understand what I'm doing I've been doing this since I was a little kid and I'm, I'm just I'm so over all the back and forth with with the experts and this guy and that guy I don't care anymore okay if you want to have an argument come meet me in person and talk like an adult I'm not arguing with anyone anymore let's go clean the Bushmaster all right this is a snake I can use a snake hook with. Bushmaster, about five, six foot long, my sweet baby. She has gone to the bathroom, she needs fresh water. It's time to give her a nice cleaning. And this is a well-respected pit viper with heat seeking pits that you should always use a tool with. You've seen me in the past free handle this snake because yeah, I know this individual and I can get away with handling certain snakes when I spend the time with them. But you know what? This is not a snake somebody should be touching with their hands, of course. This is Flechisus Muda, AKA Silent Death. This animal literally has the ability to take someone down with one bite. It's an 85 to 95 fatality rate, even with the treatment of anti-venin or anti-venom, whichever you want to go with. Look at that beautiful snake. This is my favorite type of viper on the planet, the family Lechisus. And uh, it's cousin the black-headed Bushmasters are my true favorites when it comes to vipers. And you can see that she's not really the biggest Bushmaster, because you guys have of course seen the one I worked with at McCarthy's Wildlife Sanctuary. And by the way, uh, RIP to the king, because that Bushmaster sadly passed away a couple weeks back. Uh, Mark McCarthy had that Bushmaster forever, and that was the largest Bushmaster I ever worked with in captivity. I had the pleasure of working with that snake for years. But this is my beautiful female. I love her to bits and pieces. We're just gonna get her into the holding receptacle, nice and easy. She's probably pushing like five foot, almost six foot now and she loves to eat warmed up rats. So we're trying to get her just to eat warmed up frozen thawed so we don't have to feed live anymore. She's the only snake in the snake house that actually has to eat live, and I don't like doing that. Uh, I'm gonna get this enclosure cleaned up, and I'll see you guys in a split. Lower. Come on. Okay. I can't, I can't, you know, the brain bleed, I can't, I can't do too much. It's healed, but. <laughs> All right, we got a nice clean enclosure for the Bushmaster. I'm gonna take this, oh, such a beautiful snake. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see the colors, but she's just got this gorgeous charcoal black going along that beige and the pineapple feel of the Bushmaster. Such a badass snake. How can you not love a snake that feels and acts as the dragon of Southern Peru? 
the rainforest. Look at that. I don't want to put her at such an angle, but like she's literally like a five plus foot snake now. She's getting some nice size to her. Let me get her right into there. Give her a little tickle. There you go. My beautiful girl. I'm just going to coax her into there a little bit. Get her coils into there. Get this glass close so we're safer. We have a little shield. Look at that. And then, of course, the little thorn of the Bushmaster's tail getting bigger and bigger. So they don't have a rattle, but they'll take that little keratin tip thorn and they'll slap it against the leaves to sound like a rattlesnake. Basically, a Bushmaster is a massive rattlesnake without a rattle. All right, let's get a lock on that. Locked and secure. Good to go. Whew. All right, beautiful people. That's going to be it for this episode. Uh, I'll see you on the next one, but before I leave, comment below. What do you think about what I just said? I already know how I feel about it. I'm sticking to it. I'm going to be using tools for everything else, but uh, in certain situations, you know, you can use a tool to get a, an animal like Kevin out of a certain situation, but it's almost impossible to be dealing with that animal just on a hook, slipping and sliding. I'm not trying to break his ribs. I'm not trying to hurt him. He's a big boy and, uh, you know, it takes expertise to be able to handle these animals. And if you think that's ego, I'm sorry. It is what it is. I've been doing this my whole life. I'm not going to be doing anything else with my life. And I'm lucky enough to be alive. And I've learned my lessons plenty of times. So I'll see you guys on the next one. Stay beautiful, stay safe, and most of all, follow your dreams and stay passionate about what you love. Whether it's working with wildlife, being an astronaut, being a comedian, doing whatever you want to do, be a firefighter, be a hero. Be a hero to the person next to you, behind you, in front of you, whatever it is. I love you guys. I'll see you on the next one. Special boy. Oh! <laughs>